Maria Koto. Uh, welcome to Aging with Attitude. Uh, age concern Himanaki Tanga Kouma Tua Wadarapa. And today uh, we have some special guests with us today. Two wahine, two beautiful wahine from Pacifica Trust of Wadarapa. Pacifica Wadarapa Trust. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you're able to correct me there. I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> Can you say that again, please? Uh, Pacifica Wadarapa Trust. Okay, so let's introduce ourselves and then we can ask you some questions. Um, uh, Georgina Lolonga. My name is uh, Georgina and I am the community connector at Pacifica or Wararapa Trust. <laughs> and I am Della Rose Thompson. Um, I am from Pacifica Wararapa Trust. I am the administrator. Um, and yeah, I am Samoan Māori. Samoan Māori, oh. <laughs> Nice. And our usual hostess. <laughs> Boring old Susan from uh, Boring old Susan. Kia ora. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and also kia ora na to those uh, Cook Island whanau. Um, I'm saying that just because I just got back from Rarotonga <laughs> and had a beautiful time in Rarotonga with my whanau. Beautiful swimming with the turtles and the eagle rays. And also I went to Aitutaki, uh, which was magnificent celebrated over there to their constitution day uh, which was um on the 4th of august 1965 was when they first signed that and so um yep yeah, they had a beautiful uh, beautiful concerts it last from monday through to thursday and had a couple of um groups from new zealand aotearoa go over and um, perform as well magnificent time if you want to go and see some um, Cook Island culture and its um, essence, go in August, the beginning of August, because that's when they celebrate their Constitution Day. Um, you won't regret it. It is absolutely beautiful. Anyway, oh, and also a shout out to uh, my uh, granddaughter, Harpalicious, so delicious. Uh, she's off to school this morning. She wasn't very happy, but uh -huh. I said to her, I'll shout your name up on the radio. And she went, Yes, please, call it. <laughs> And so, yep, she's going to school today happy because she's famous in her world because she's on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> so, good luck for love to both um, Georgina and Dolores. Um, so, Pacifica Trust. Huh? Yes. Pacifica, Pacifica Trust. Pacifica, so, yep. what does that mean? What does that entail in terms of Pacifica, in terms of the, uh, the people that you represent? So basically, um, working alongside Luther, who is our uh, Luther Tolo, who is our manager, um, I think it goes back to um, my parents back then thinking of um, we need something to kind of help our Pacific people back in those days, especially when mum and, my mum and dad had, or my parents and Della Rose's grandparents have come from Samoa and came here to uh, master and, and work. So. Um, every anything that was happening within our Pacifica community, we'd always kind of reach out to the leaders and stuff like that. So, one of the you know, my my dad and Della Rose's granddad was one of the the Samoan leaders in the community at the time. And then, you know, along comes Luther. So when things happen, like say for example, um, Samoa had a cyclone. It was just trying to collect all the um, Pacifica people that, you know, had families over there and how could we congregate together? So basically, and it's just to cut it short, is it's providing a um, a service to our Pacifica people here in the community. And it's not just Masterton, it's actually out towards South Wairarapa as well. Okay, okay, so it's Wairarapa whole? Yeah, Wairarapa as a whole, all okay. the way from um, Masterton, Carleton, Greytown, Marumbara, Featherston. Okay, what about Ikatahuna? We stretch out that far if we if if they are needed if we are needed out yeah. there. So because yeah. your heart goes a long we, way. We we mm. do have yeah. So um, alongside of that, just say um, letting you all know that Filipino the Philippines are, are part of us as well. Yeah. So um, they're a growing community as well. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Um, we we definitely um, help those that want to be served by us. Yeah, yeah. I um that's what I was hoping that you'd define because what does Pacifica mean? You know, like some might think of it as just um. Samoan, Samoan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but so that's why I ask that question in terms of who do you service? Filipinos, good, because... But in saying that, yeah. um, we 
if anyone, and this is to anyone out in the community, if you would love to be served by us, we would love to serve you. And it kind of takes off what our elderly did for us when we were younger. Yeah. They served us, so we want to give back. So we're here to make sure that we are doing what we can to serve our community and anyone that wants to be served. Yeah, I, I look, you, you can help me, uh, <laughs> you can correct me if you'd like, because I'm always up for correction, as we saw in the beginning. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, like, I would term Pacifica as all those in the Pacific. Yes. Mm. So, anyway. That is correct. That is correct. But I guess for us, well, you know, born and bred, I'm born and bred here in Masterton. Yeah. So, for me, it's all like that. Com the whole community is family, regardless of colour, yeah, um, ethnicity. Et ethnicity, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's just building great relationships within the community is, you know, um, I guess it's a success in what we have and what our journey is going to be now that Pacifica Wadarapa Trust is, is here. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. Because it means um, that we're filling gaps. Yes. We're filling gaps. Exactly. Yeah. And if you want the help, all you need to do is put your hand up and say, hey, so in terms of that, what is your contact details? What's your phone number? Oh, we've got a um, 0800 number. Yeah. 0800 727 That's our 0800 number. We also have a website. So that's pw.org. Okay. Okay, and so we've also got a Facebook page that's Pacifico Water for Trust. Great. <laughs> yeah. Great. Got to be out there. Yeah, mm. and Instagram as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. And so, um, so what are some of the programs that you run? So we have been running an elderly program that is Alcina Sina. Okay, um, first, what does Alcina Sina mean? Alcina Sina means. Um, Respected treasure, treasures, um, but uh, the original meaning is white hair. White hair. But our elderly are respected treasures to us, yeah. so that's why we've named the Ao Sina Sina. It's a beautiful name. Yeah. I like the I like the original uh, meaning white head, um, because, uh, and I'm going back to um, biblical. Um, yeah. Yeah, where yeah. it says, "Those with grey hair is a crown of glory." Amen. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know that, eh, Anthony? I do because I got white hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> no, but that's what it's, it talks about. Those who have white hair or grey hair, it's a, a crown of glory. Why are you saying that? That was uh, um, uh, the name that came from Reverend Mickey oh, nice. Alvey yes. from um, the Marston Congregational Church. Yeah. So mm. he was able to give that, um, that blessing of that name towards um, mm. the, yeah. the program. And mm. that, that's great. That's great. And the, one of the other reasons why I say that is because sometimes um, because of uh, ageism, um, people, younger people, tend to forget mm. that when there's an older person in the house, there's a treasure in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They forget that the wisdom that they have has been over many years. Yes. They forget the experiences that those people have gone through will help them through their walk into the future. Mm. And so that's why I enjoy mm. um, that name. Yep. So talk about your program anyway. <laughs> so this program um, started because we had a seniors lunch and all of them had asked for a program. Um, so we've done this El Sina Sina program for um, a fortnight of eight weeks. Um, mm -hmm. We are still planning our last event for this El Sina Sina day, um, but it has been such a good outcome with the Filipinos as well as our Pacifica Islanders that are from all the way in Wairarapa, but yeah. So when is that last program? Oh, it hasn't been decided yet. Oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah. So um, it was supposed to be um, last week, a fortnight, or fortnight ago. ago, but um, things happen. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're just waiting for our uh, managers to come back from Samoa. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just to, yeah, and then we'll just have those talks. So, um, yeah, to be continued. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's something to look forward um, for those people who are of Pacifica um, descent. Okay, there's going to be a program that's going to be run um, shortly, and I'm sure be put out there into the community. Uh, please attend it. It's mm. a fantastic um, time of fun, mm. games, exercise, 
food. Yeah. So the, the good thing about the Old Centre Centre program, if I could um, step in, sorry, Delores, is um, we uh, we work alongside you guys, mm. Agent Concerns. So, mm. you know, um, every when it, when the program happens, we always have Ginny who comes in and does the um, the fitness side of it. So that's so good. It's so good to get our elderly moving because yep. most of the elderly, whether they just move making cups of teas or out in the garden, but it's just these little exercises that make a difference. Mm. So that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so cool within the program that, um, this, uh, the program that was set up. So yeah. thanks to Agent Concern for being able to, you know, partner up. Yeah, we're we're like you. Uh, if you want some help, we're willing to help. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get in there and Thanks, the Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. I'll pass it on to Jenny. Okay? <laughs> I'm sure she'll listen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I looked, listened to a podcast um, last week and I was this specific, ah, uh, specific, this professor of sports, okay? And he was buff ass, you know? And he said, you know, um, when you're 40 years old, you should get to the gym. And the, the fellow that was with him said, why is that? He said, because you need to be able to, by the time you're 60, get into a routine of um, going to the gym. He said, because when you're 80, he said, you'd be, still be able to stand up by yourself. Mm. You'll be, still be able to have a cup of tea lifted up, oh, yeah. put your plate on. You won't be lifting the same weights as you used to when you're 40. Yeah. He said, but that's okay. You'll still have that strength there. Mm. And he said, so from his perspective, the older ones are the ones that needed to go to the gym mm -hmm. so that they could. Because back in the day, you know, I'm sure on the islands, there were older people uh, going out fishing, paddling mm -hmm. in the lagoon. Yep. Okay. There was those people. That's how they stayed fit. Mm -hmm. That's how come they were able, strong enough to do yeah. the things that they needed to do. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, we have that same mindset. Move it or lose it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and please don't lose it. Um, so there are some programs um, out there. Um, Age Concern runs um, a couple. What are those ones called? Susie? There's a, a fitness class. Um, they, I think there's a beginners and a, in a um, more experienced or more fit oh, yeah. Um And steady as you go. Steady um, as you go. Yep. That's the strength some, and fitness based one. Yeah, yeah. which is That's great. ACC approved, yeah. which yeah. is good. Anthony and I did that, and I, and I must say we did that for the first couple of weeks that we were in this job. And even though it's on a chair, it was actually really hard because mm. I think um, just getting up and down off a chair, which is something that everyone does every day. Every day. But I've seen my, my um, you know, older komatua and that really struggling to get up, and it's um, and they don't want any help. Um, and they just really try and manage on their own, but it's it's quite sad because they, I think they stop eating so much protein and yeah. a lot of sweets. Um, yeah, yeah, that's sweet it. food just is the, is the big cup of tea, sugar. <laughs> um, but yeah, really important to to keep your your strength up. Yeah, and there's um, also the line dancing classes. Yeah, line dancing, and I think um, Rachel does like a, be a beginner's class and she also does one um, in her own time you know for more experienced um, line dancers oh, wow. ever tried line dancing guys um, done it once twice yeah. and then you make it up <laughs> yeah. yeah do the old electric slide or something like that. <laughs> electric yeah, boogie yeah. yeah the electric boogie <laughs> <laughs> I mean and all those sorts of things are, is getting people together and um, socialising and having a few laughs because you know we don't laugh a lot these days no, and if um, our older people are at home on their own it's They've got no one to laugh with them or have a conversation, and so getting them out and getting them mobile is is um, really good for you know your spirit really and um, yeah. keeps you going really. Yeah, and when you mm. laugh, you um, let off some dopamine, yeah. which is the uh, um, the body's own um, drug, mm. happy drug. Yeah, which which helps too. I guess the, is the saying is laughter is the best medicine. Oh, absolutely. Mm. So, um, yeah. yeah. And Just, well, they tried. It's in their Bible, eh? Yeah. I'm very hard. Yeah, yeah. Do it good like a medicine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a merry heart. A broken spirit dryeth the bones, but a merry heart mm -hmm. is the joy of the Lord. Do you guys have singing? singing? Uh, Anthony likes to sing a lot. Oh, yeah. Like, this, they have singing groups? You know, yes. The, oh, we do have a, um, a singing group. At age consume, we have a ukulele group. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So you That's name it, cool. and if you've got enough people that want to join, um, we'll get, Rachel's we'll get it very, going. Yeah, Rachel will get it oh, going. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounds cool. So um, I guess I, I guess for like what you've got now is what we're looking into. Mm. You know, just starting off and just you know newly established, but it's just you know um, our elderly out there are you know whether they're eager or not. <laughs> 
I think I think we because um, one of the um, activities that we did was the health check day. Um, and that was really good. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll pass it over to Delarose over the health check day. The health check day, we had about 17 health organisations help with our um, elderly. Um, we had a very good outcome. Um, and it was open to all all elderly in the Wairarapa. Um But um, most of the elderly really wanted um, their blood pressures to be done. Mm-hmm. So we done that, we listened to them and provided it for them. Um, but it was a very good outcome, I can say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that day because I saw a lot also going to get their blood sugars tested. Yes. Checked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so, as we know, um, part of the challenges that we face as Māori and Pacifica yeah. is with diabetes. Mm. Yeah. And to to actually just to know um, what the range is like for in terms of um, blood sugar levels. And if we don't know, then we just keep on going. Yeah. Mm. We don't care. Because uh, we don't know. You don't know what you don't know. But if you do know, you know, you can take some steps to, to change, you know. And so I, I think I talked to a fellow from uh, Purirua. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And he was um, doing this uh, for pre-diabetes. It's really around about 3.6, mm. whatever me- uh, measurements they had. And he said, so, um, you know, we try and get those things um, down a bit. And so once you know what it is, you can move towards reducing it. Mm. Mm. That's good. So, yeah. it was, it was so it was good, um, you know, in saying that there was certain families that, I said my role was the Uber driver, so okay. I had to make sure that the elderly turned up to these um, events, yep. which is really cool because it, it was, for them it was like, oh, thank you for picking us up, you know, all the comments that you know, and I said, you know, this is, this is our catchment, mm. you know, making sure that we serve our elderly and mm. making sure that they get from A to B, so we've got the services there. Um, hence, if um, anyone out there wants to donate a van, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in saying that, there were, and there were families that haven't been out, um, you know, out and about. So coming to their very first kind of Aosina Sina was really good. Um, so, you know, getting them and then getting them to, and then just introducing them to the services that were provided that could, maybe help them in the future. So, you know, mm. we had uh, Ethel from Duncan's Pharmacy. Um, um, so he came down and t- took some um, flu vax yes, vaccination. Yes. So there oh, was, cool. um, there was a, um, a list of... Um, so he was really happy because he managed to get some uh, people vaccinated too. So mm. it was it was such a great day. Like, mm. like you said, Anthony, it was really good just having the services there and, yeah. you know, what we have out there and what we can connect with and mm. network with. So... Yeah, well, that was really cool. Is that something that you might do again, do you think? Or? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely, Aid to Tell Rose. Yes. Yes. Because yeah. our older people are always, um, well, they seem to be quite shy too, and if they've been isolated for a long period of so, time, you know, with COVID and yeah. stuff like that, they haven't been going out into the community worried about, the, you know, any sickness that's around. Yeah. Um, so getting them to a safe place, yeah. um, you know, and um, finding out about their health and vaccinations yeah. is um, great for them. Because with also the the um, vaccination, we had um, we had a program where we went to their houses. Nice. So we had you know working alongside Ethel from Dunlins Pharmacy mm. was a was a great help. So we um, did a program last year, the same thing, but we worked alongside um, at the time the DHB. Mm-hmm. So we had nurses in that going out um, visiting our um, families who wasn't able to. You know, um, go go to the hospital or go to the pharmacies mm. to get their and you know flus. So we managed to do um, house calls. So that's what we did again this year. Um, this time with um, a different help. So we have Ethel from Dungan's Pharmacy. So he came and did that project with us. So right. it was really good just to be able to get um, you know work alongside with the RSC workers that are out in the um, uh, Greytown and mm. and. Um, I guess Martinborough, yeah. if it goes further out there. So we got them done as well. So, you know, providing that for our people is is really good and, you know, trying to, um, I guess, build on that for our Pacifica Trust mm. and yeah. all these programs that we're trying to work work on and then and, and just implement it out there. So um, just in saying that some of the programs that we have kind of done, we, we've, um, as a community connector, we've... Um, done two events with uh, UCOL. 
Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so it was just for the their students there, so students that started in semester one and semester two. So providing um, what information that we got from our Pacifica, and I think for the Pacifica students that are there, there was probably about 13 mm -hmm. that are actually studying. But in saying that, like we said, like I said earlier, you know, we, we're there to serve anybody that wants to, you know, sign up with us. So um, being able to implement a study hub yeah. for um, the students there, if they, you know, if there are study areas that the students usually go to, like the library or even at the study hub at um, UCO. But for our Pacifica, we can, we've got a space um, where we are and provide um, a study hub there. Um, we're still negotiating on the times, um, talking with Phoenix, who is the Pacifica coordinator at UCO. Um, he said that um, the after hours times, so from six to eight, is, you know, preferable for our um, parents that are out there studying mm. so you know having a little area for the kids well we have um, the students come in and study but also um, UCO can provide the um, uh, I guess the tutors as well so yeah, yeah. it's so good to kind of network with like you guys and you know UCO and anyone else that we uh. network um, kind of um, have ideas and support with what we you know have as program so yeah, yeah. that's uh, another another program that we've kind of looking at well with the mental health and that um there's been talks so we have been talking in the past couple of months with um but trying to focus more on what we can do for our pacifica men mm -hmm. so i'm um, trying to get pacifica men mentors um in that sense um it's it's been a journey but um hopefully there are there are men out there that are um, reaching out saying oh if you need need someone to kind of come in and be one mm. of those mentors then mm. yeah mm. so those programs are yeah in terms of the hub what i um because as you know i used to lecture for fitirea um and so one of the advantages was that when um they would go to the hub uh we had one from amari and one pacific yeah, pacifica yeah. um that they were able to speak in their own language yeah yeah and by doing that they couldn't do that in class because yeah, yeah, feel, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they exactly. feel really good. But when they were by themselves, or in a group by themselves, they would use uh, the original language, mm. and then they'll get clarity. That's cool. That's yeah. quite a good point. Because they're able to express themselves instead of yeah. translating back and going again. Yeah. yeah. And ask the, the stupid questions, which aren't stupid, you yeah. know. They would ask those questions. And that's it. It's just, you know, our people kind of turn around and just oh, no, I won't ask that. Yeah. But it's like, don't be shy, just ask. Mm. You know, every every question that you ask, it's, it's never silly. Yeah. Because you don't know until you ask. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. yeah. And it gave them the freedom because they were in a group that they were comfortable in. Yeah. To go, what did this actually mean? They were saying this thing, and I was going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. It was great for their learning. You know, and even um, writing essays together, yeah. they'll be able to throw, because when you have a look at my maps, all it is is just a group of ideas. So everyone just threw ideas into the ring. Yeah. And they read it all down and they chose the ideas. None of the, um, the essays that they wrote were the same. They're all different because it come from a different perspective. But they had a big table with all these uh, words and ideas on it yeah. that they captured themselves. It was great. It was great. Yeah. Oh, Even um, I said to uh, one of them, oh, this was a Chinese person. I said to him, write it in Chinese if you can express yourself. Because I'll, I'll get someone to translate it. But in that, I'll know what you, you actually understand. If you can't speak English properly or you struggle. Oh, struggle, yeah. I think yeah. more so, um, I think there was one student that I was working um, alongside with. In China, you know, and uh, and she wanted to do the ECE program, yep. um, the early ch childhood, but she's been a kohanga teacher for many years, okay. um, in the sense that it was uh, predominantly, you know, uh, te reo. Yep. But she wanted to um, strengthen her on, you know, the mainstream, which is, you know, the English side of it. Mm. So, you know, that was a struggle for her. So it was the same, like that was a perfect example was write it in te reo and yeah. then get it translated yeah, yeah. and then just practice because it's a lot of that comprehension stuff yes. that you have to answer. So, yeah, yeah we, we've kind of, you know, while you're talking, there was examples that mm. where I was able to kind of assist with alongside um, Phoenix. UCOL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
I'm excited for the students. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited <laughs> for them because it just gives them another tool to help them. Yeah. Yeah, another tool to help them. Great. That sounds great. I just want to give a shout out f also to, um, because you mentioned Duncan's um, Pharmacy. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so Hamish Duncan, um, <laughs> support. Great. Thank you very much for allowing your yeah. staff member to go and do this yeah. uh, with the Pacifica people. So those um, support Duncan's Pharmacy. Yeah. Because he's really supporting good. the community. They're a really nice pharmacy too. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be bigger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they are extending. Be. Oh, are they? Yeah, yes. So you know, there was that bakery next yes. door. Yes. Oh, so they've wow. um, bought that. So now it's going to. They're going to have consultation consultation rooms. Wow. Oh, nice. So they're expanding. Great. So it's really good. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. that service is quite a big area, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't want to be always going into town because the parking's an issue. It's which quite can nice. Be a that that little place. village area was it yeah. is quite it is. nice. Eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And. Uh, Consultation rooms, how long does it take to get to see a doctor or yeah. someone like that? Yeah, exactly. They're being proactive in, in that space, so great. It's quite interesting too, eh? Because when people go to a pharmacy, they haven't asked questions about medication, you know, with their yeah. doctor because they've been a bit shy or whatever. Um, and the um, the guys at the, um, what would you call them, the chemists? They um, know all about everything, oh, and, yeah, and because yeah. they're reading, yeah. the pharmacists they're reading it all the time, and so you can, if you've been a bit shy about asking, or you get you know that thing that says that you're going to have everything. These are all the things that could happen with this medication because they want to cover everything. Yeah. Um, it gives you the opportunity to they're ask those helpful, questions, and they're yeah, really yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very helpful. Yeah. Mm. I've come across one when they went, oh, "This isn't right." Why is that? Because this medication here will react not very well with this medication mm, here. Yeah, danger. And I'm going, oh, okay. <laughs> Better go see the doctor, tell him. <clears throat> yeah, and could, because they're pharmacists. Yeah. Mm. That, that's their job. Yeah. yeah no um, synergistic effects with um, drugs, yeah. whatever they might be. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. What else have you got uh, in terms of Pacifica uh, Trust? Can we go back to you know the um, the catchment of Pacifica Water of Trust? Yep. I, I I must not forget um, the whole purpose also <coughs> of why we have Pacifica Water of Trust during it was during COVID at the time. Mm. So I know Luther, you know, is really um, strong with making sure that when when COVID hit, we had no one like there was no trust or anybody to support support our Pacifica. Uh, people at the time, and if we did had people support us, it was the the services down in Wellington. So, one of the things that when I heard Luther talk talk about is, you know, we we had no one, um, but we did have help from the two iwis that that came. You know, I mean, thanks to Rangatane and uh, Natika Nunu, you know, coming together to help our people it was really good. So it was a struggle at the time. So for um, also for Luther to get this trust going is making sure that we were able to kind of, um, you know, help within that COVID space because then that was one of the big things. And while you were talking um, offline, you talked about the whole shopping. Mm. So pretty much mm. when the referrals came in, we were we were at trust that were able to um, do their welfare. So that was one of the major things of why we are here, is making sure that we were providing for our families that, um, yeah, that needed that needed that service there. So mm. it was a massive difference compared to what Luther and his team did before the whole Pacifica Trust um, happened to what where we um, established. I guess it was last year to be able to provide all the shopping and that, and this was all the way. All the way t um, through down to uh, Featherstone, Martinborough. So, mm -hmm. you know, we did all the drop-offs and stuff like that. So that was a, a blessing um, in disguise for us to be able to um, help out our families that live way out in the country to what we have here locally. And that was helping out with two other services that were doing it. There was the Wadarapa Community Trust, mm -hmm. um, which was um, Tere. So and a big help to her, and then also her kahui. So they provided a service also with Joe Nuku, um, being the manager of of that place. So three of us working together to um, make sure all our families in the Wadarapa got help with welfare. So yeah, that's a biggie. It is a biggie, mm. and you know the inception of it is important. Yeah. Yeah. How did and because it's a whakapapa. Yeah. 
Yeah. How did we come about? What what brought us to this place? And really, what brought you to that place was a heart for people. Yeah. But the best thing about it is working alongside, um, you know, the community, being able to work together with the other two services, mm. come together, um, you know, provide it for our people, provide it for people that you know needed it, um, and then also just making sure that we all kind of work together, knowing that yep, we've got this family sorted. Mm. Yep, so, sweet. So it was just, you know, that there was definitely a blessing for us to be able to um, just be a service to our people. Yeah, cool. And anyone else that wanted, yeah. what needed it. Yeah. What else, um, what other services do you provide? What else have we got? Um, Is there a youth arm? Do you do housing? Oh, we, we, so a lot of the stuff, so that that's put down there is we, are, uh, we network. So yeah. we are working alongside... Um, um, is it a working income? Yeah. So especially with our um, families that are needing, so pretty much advocacy for our families mm. that go in there, mm. um, and to provide an understanding of um, what they're signing, what you know, what their, I guess, um, money woes are. Mm. So they've got family members that take them in, but they kind of reach out and say, oh. Georgina, can you kind of come in with me mm, and my parents? Mm. So there's we're working alongside that. Yet yeah, with the housing with um uh, who was it? Uh, Ministry of Social Development. Yes. So yeah, yeah. Um, and then just making sure. So there was that big massive um uh kind of like um commotion when it was um the trust houses when they're yeah they're, um registering for yeah um, or when social housing yeah mm -hmm. and also when the um, fees went up. So yeah. there, so it was pretty much where families reached out to us. So we were in there, you know, talking alongside Trust House, yeah. <laughs> going in there doing, you know, what we could do to help, you know, mm. the the families that are struggling. So, mm. and the the outcome of that was um, they held, I mean, they put a hold on the the big massive um, increase, and then yeah, from there we were able to kind of just. Let them know this is what's happened, and then you know, Trust House went and did their their part, mm. being able to um, um, go around to the um, families and and just let them know that it's you know put on hold and stuff like. That. So it's all all kind of advocacy roles mm. that I've did you kind say, of come into. Did you use that word connectors, or uh, what was the word you used earlier, which is quite, you know, you're connecting oh. people to other services and. Networking, networking. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. all those, all those, um, yeah, abilities to um, for people to trust you yeah. to to do that work for them. Because when you think of MSD wins and um, even Trust House, they're bigger organisations, and you don't know whether you're going to get heard or you might have already yeah. said something and that it's been overlooked. So it's good to have you so, know, an yeah. advocate. So they're able yeah. to kind of reach out and say, yeah. okay, well, I've been into wins, but do not. so it's like, okay. Georgina, can you go in and yeah. with the family say, so, yeah, I'm I'm happy to help and do what I can mm. Mm. as an advocate. Mm. But yeah. And while you're talking about housing, what about um rebates? Rebates. Yeah. Oh, rebates. Yes, rebates are a big thing. Um, I'm trying to get some people that I know rebating because the year's gone so fast, and people think that it actually cuts off when the new um the new uh, rates come in to effect, oh. but you can actually keep applying it. Um, I think sometimes on the website they might be changing a few things yep. because you can make application for a rebate um, right right now, even though um, your first instalment has is due today for yep. all those out there that are paying rates, um, which can be quite a big pocket killer, a hole yep. in your pocket. Um, yeah, to make sure that if you think that your income is, I think I've written some notes because I'm... <laughs> I got up extra early today because Monday, you know, I'm good on a Monday. Um, yeah, so low income um, families that have, um, that own their, own their properties of course. Uh, so it's a family income um, based on your gross income for the last tax year. So it's quite good because everyone gets a tax certificate sent out for the 31st of March for, of each year. So you can take that tax certificate in with you um, when you um, apply, I think they used to get you to make an appointment to go and see someone, but now you can apply online, um, which, you know, a lot of our older people don't have the opportunities or have the, um, you know, the equipment at home for that, but um, you can go in and, f and pick up an application form, which I do happen to have one here. Um, and it's really easy to fill out, actually, because you just, if you go, if you go online, you can actually pop in um, what your gross income is, and it will tell you whether you're going to apply. 
um, yeah, you can apply for the, the rebate or whether you qualify for it. So, um, yeah, really, really helpful. Um, I think if you, it gives you an opportunity to give two amounts and it will tell you you may apply it may apply to you, you may get the rebate um, and just to fill out the form so that they can do the assessment oh, for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, the right. councillor are pretty good. If you've got any questions, just pop in. I did pop in on Friday because, but everyone was popping in on Friday because of the rates being due today. So, oh, yeah. um, But they're pretty efficient there. And um, yeah, or give them a call and find out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty Because we can save money, save money. Oh. Yeah, I think the maximum is like $750 for the year, which is huge. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, it takes into account dependents as well. So if you if you've still got people living with you at home that are dependent on you, it must increase you know the um, allowable income for that. Yeah. Mm. So pretty pretty straightforward when you do it online. It just gets sent off to someone. Um, but if you've got any questions, I always ask questions, so I like to ring up and ask, <laughs> just in case you know just to clarify yeah. things because sometimes yeah. you misinterpret stuff that's written down. Um, and you don't have to make an appointment, um, so that's a good thing. That's and if you want to make an appointment, they're quite happy to do that as well. Yeah. Oh. So we do get a lot. We've had a lot of inquiries recently yep. around rebates, um, and it does say that you can't apply um, after the first instalment, but you can actually still um, look at it through the rest of the year as well. Yeah. So that's yeah, just. So don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Yeah. It's Get in there and help your your people get seven hundred dollars, or you know, mm. seven hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars. Because we all know that rates are seem to be going up, and um, you know, when you're lucky enough to have your own home, you think that that you're you're pretty well set up mm. for life. But there's so many other things like insurances are going up, house insurances are pretty hefty. So really important to to budget for the year. Don't just try and think that you're going to have that money to pay each quarter. Yeah. I mean, do you guys do any? Um, support budgeting and stuff. Um, we again network with a uh, Reap House, so yeah. they've got that budgeting service. Yeah. Um, nice. Kim Simonic, yeah. um, yet um, still yet to kind of catch up again, so that mm. she can come and have a look in our space, so that yeah. there are families out there that will be needing it. Mm. There's also um, that service that because she's um, building financial capabilities, yeah. eh? And so they have that money. <coughs> Excuse me, money talks yes. um, yep. um, that you can ring up and ask questions yep. as well, and they can refer to come service. Yeah, um, it's a really awesome um, service, and quite often you see. I always watch the breakfast show on TV because they always have, you know, things that are um, um, in our community at the moment, and one of them is around budgeting, and they refer you to all those services yeah. which are government funded. So, um, yeah. So yes, we are. Yeah, in the in the you know, networking alongside Reap House and mm. trying to um, collate what we need to do mm. to kind of bring these services out, especially for our Basafika people that mm. are struggling, or we know that they're struggling and they need, mm. it's a need, mm. but it's, it's, it's one of those where, you know, they've got to want to yep. instead of being forced to, mm. yep. but it's, you know, I guess that role is to be able to have that conversation mm. with them. Be able to sell it. Yeah, and that, that's it. It's just selling things yeah. like that to them to understand, mm. you know, this is what's happening. And I guess, you know, with what you're buying mm. is, you know, not good for, you know, if you've got a family mm. and you're buying the wrong stuff, mm. you know. So, I mean, and that's with our elderly as well. You know, they, um, and I guess for our, our bus freaker people, they like to send money home to help the families back, back yeah. in the islands. Mm. So it's just trying to manage that too. Um, so, yeah, it, it is, it's all about, um, you know, having those conversations with them. And it's quite good planting the seed too, eh? because they yep. might be a bit shy about it to start with and, and then they might it. come to you a senior senior and then they're all talking about yeah. it and then they all think, well, actually, that's so, you know, let's do it. You yeah. know, they like to do it, um, you know, in consultation with each other, really. It's, and that's, yeah, yeah. Oh, if they want to, I yes, guess. But yeah. yeah, I guess mm. it's just a comfortable um, environment for them and stuff like that. Mm. But, yeah, that's... You know, up and coming, I guess. Mm. It's just making sure that, you know, they are comfortable around us to be able to reach out and say, hey, come sit down here. Mm. Look at this. So yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, have you paid it? So, yeah, it's just stuff like that, that, mm. you know. Um, I know that when I um, was at advocacy for a family um, with uh, uh, 
um, with one of the community members and their and their parents. So it was quite nice to be able to sit there and just calm my uh, the the well, her well her parents were good, but she was a bit kind of like, "Am I doing it right?" And I said, "Yeah." You're all good. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yep. And then I said, it's all up to your parents whether they want me to kind of, you know, because you don't want to. Sometimes parents don't want other parents don't want other people to see what they've got, you know, in that exactly. sense. But mm. I guess it's just that build up of trust yep. and being able to kind of like pop in and say, I'm just here to say hello. How are you? Because that's one of my roles too, is to pop in and visit our elderly mm. as much as I can. Mm. Um, but you know, the good thing about it is. You're coming for a cup of tea? Sure, why not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what have you got? Bunny keke! So, yeah, it's, it's quite nice just to be able to do that in the role that I have. Mm. So, and, yeah, yeah. and your role too, it's, um, it does, and with our role uh, with elder abuse response and going and meeting people, it takes um, a really long time to build that relationship yeah. that yeah. they feel that you know, it's safe for them to talk to yeah, you. Exactly. Um, and that is really important as part of your role, obviously, as well. Yeah. Mm. It's it's really great to have someone's confidence in you, eh? When oh, they yeah, finally yeah. reach out to you and you go, yes, yeah, um, yeah. you know, we can help, yeah. which is great. So that's good. Mm. It's something that, you know, that I've, well, well, I've been doing ever since, you know, working alongside the, you know, kids at school and mm. working in the schools and then being able to, you know, provide myself in the community, uh, especially with sport. Yes. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and then being able to do this role and then going out in the community and helping our people. Mm. And, yeah, so it's just been really cool. Mm. Well, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, so, that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, in terms of technology? Um, because we know that it's leaping forward really quickly. Um, is there a program that you run for your orderly around computer help? No. Okay. Is there a program? So that's something to look at. So, you know, building up on this, um, uh, the Alcina Sina program is something that we can look at and doing technology, a technology yeah, um, yeah, yeah. a day. So, yeah. Because yeah. um, I know that um, digital seniors uh, are a place to, to help and they can go out mm. to um, homes. That's one of their programs. Yeah. Um, but, oh, that's but, cool. Yeah. yeah. But in that, though, in that, though, it's for me anyway, it's about. Um, getting them alongside both of you first mm. so that they start to understand. Because um, some of them, some of the elderly have phones, eh? A lot of them. So it's also trying to see if what they know about how to access, you know, do on the phones mm. and the extra bit they can do on the phones. Like, I don't know, I don't know what they do on the phone. You can do but especially, especially texting. I guess it's just teaching them how to text. Yeah. Yeah, and depending how big their phone is, yeah. so you know whether the letters are the buttons are bigger or yeah, the yeah. buttons are smaller. So depending depending yeah. on that and what they want to know about how yeah, to use yeah. their phone, even mm. about how to change the font size. Yeah, mm. it's just yeah. So yeah. we would look at something like that when we head back to um, head back to work and you know look at some of the stuff that we that you guys have already kind of mm. got and mm. maybe look at that yeah so yeah digital seniors is the ones that we we um promote um because they they've been really helpful That's cool. um, for us in terms of that mm. yeah. what uh, what other things that um you want to do um what else have we i guess it's just I think for us at the moment is when families come in and want assistance. And I guess um, when we had Reagan as our health navigator, she helped a couple of families set up, especially when families that come from Samoa. Yeah. So she kind of helped them get the IRD, you know, set up the IRD. We, um, but they, one good thing about our community is there's the community that help out with these families. Yeah. But they also one good thing about the community is they come to Pasifika yeah. um, to see what we can do to um, help. So it's just I guess at the for the time being, you know, the programs that we are implementing or have set up, um, we will try and you know because for for the time being, our Sina Sina is just on pause yeah. until we um, you know, finalise um, um, the last. The last activity for Alcina Sina, mm -hmm. and then just going back, 
just going back to work and just having a debrief and, and reflection yeah. of what we can do better and stuff. And then looking at other programs where, where there are other people out there, our Pasifika men, <laughs> who are wanting to come in into the space. Um, I guess with us, it's working with age and concern, mm. um, what what you guys are doing, which has given us ideas ideas on you know what we can implement in the programs mm -hmm. that are up and coming. Um, there are um, oh, there is also a, an event coming up. It's the Pacifica Roadshow uh, for Victoria University. Okay, cool. Um, held at um, Pacifica Wadarapa Trust on the seventh of September. Is that correct? Okay. Yep, seventh of September. So um, that's um, so again networking with um, the vice chancellor. Um, at um, Victoria, Victoria University, which is Winnie Laban, mm. um, and her team came out to visit our area. So they're doing a couple of road shows um, within the certain regions of the Lower North. So one of one of the places that they're coming to is us. Um, and then uh, the team came in, had a look at um, the area of um, where they could hold the um, road show. So that's definitely happening on the 7th. It's um, trying to scope our secondary, you know, school leavers that were wanting to, you know, study at Victoria, but they also have a support group for our Pacifica students there as well. So that's up and coming um, on the 7th of September from 6 to 8. So, okay. Yeah. More than welcome to come. <laughs> what is the physical address? It is 23 Intermediate Street. 23 Intermediate Street. 23 okay. Intermediate Street. Delores, I've got a question to ask you. Sure. You're so quiet, so I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, am I talking too much? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> so in terms of um, the future in your role, what would you like to see um, at Pacifica Trust? Um, I would just like to see more workers at our work. Yeah. So, um, of different cultures, not just Samoan, um, but having many, um, many programs, just like how you guys have mentioned, um, especially with the technology. Um, but um, I'd like to see it branch out more in Carterton and South Wairarapa, so we have our own little places, so not everyone has to come to Masterton. So have our little stations there. Yeah, so satellites. Any satellites. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they need any help, they don't have to just drive all the way to Masterton when they can just... Oh, we're in Featherston, so you can contact contact us there, but that's what I'd like to see for our Pacifica or Wadarapa Trust to be at, but, yeah. Great. That's Great. Quite, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? With South Wadarapa, we sort of... Um, we tried different um, outreaches at the libraries, um, but didn't get um, a lot of um, people coming in for that. So now we're sort of trying to do like Featherston um, Community, Community Centre, Centre, which is a great start. And, you know, because sometimes it's quite a lot to get your staff to sit somewhere and, you know, you don't have a lot mm. of um, um, people coming in and out. But if you can advertise those little, you know, you're going to be down there every second week or something mm. like that and just see how much, um, how mm. much people, how many people come in and, mm. yeah. Georgina, what about for you? What would um, you like to see? The same as Delores, um, um, our trust expanding or just um, having more um, colleagues in the space, being able to provide, you know, a member to go out there and do outreaches, mm. just what, you know, how you guys have. Yeah. Um, another thing is we have been in talks with the um, working, I think it's the welcoming committee's advisor oh, yes, out yes, of yes. South Wairarapa District Council, um, Michaela Lloyd. So, um, you know, she's come to us in the sense of, you know, what can we do for our Pacifica people out in the South Wairarapa? And we had talks and mentioned and said, look, I mean, if we've got a um, a community leader that's based, I guess she's in Featherston, um, Nifo Ili. She's a great um, uh, leader down in the, in, right down in Featherston. So I did mention to her that, to, to Michaela, that, you know, even if you have a little event, mm. that we can come down there. So, mm. you know, not always coming up here, we can come down there and whatever services that, you know, are happy to kind of come down there and and, and have a space out there, that will be something for um, them to, to look at and be mm. providing an event that will kind of bring the community together. Because I guess there's some 
stuff that's happening down South Wairarapa that's, I think it's the rates or something that a lot of the community's not happy about. Yeah, yeah. they get so, quite um Yeah, yeah they, poor yeah, hard. so it, it's always trying to make sure that if, if we're not doing it here, then we want to share our talents down mm. that way. So we nice. want to make sure that we, we can do what we can do to help out, um, mm. this, you know, the district council down there. So I did have that. So there might be an up and coming event, but that's probably kind of coming near to the end of the end mm. of the year. Mm. So um, yeah, another to be continued. Okay, yeah. and that's so good because you know I I've got this saying, and it's may all your dreams but one come true. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because if we don't have dreams, then we go nowhere. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so so there's, there's definitely a dream for um, yeah. South Wairarapa, so yeah. we're going to make it happen. Great, mm. yeah. great, great. So just one more last thing from, from um, for both of you, yeah. or one of you, whichever you choose. <laughs> <laughs> Dela Rose, no, you don't look so <laughs> Dela Rose looks at me, I'm not looking at you. Um, the hour's gone really fast. And so I would like to give you the last word to, um, to say whatever you want to say to your community and someone or whatever language you choose. Um, give you this opportunity to say whatever you want to say and then um, say thank you to you both for coming in and joining us on this um, Aging With Attitude podcast today. <laughs> Uh, just first and f uh, foremost, um, thank you to you, Anthony, um, for allowing us to be in this space. Um, um, thanks to Della Rose for coming. I know <coughs> she's a bit nervous coming, but <coughs> she did a good job. Just one thing for me is, you know, um, our Pacifica community, you know where we are, um, the Pacifica Wadarapa Trust. And um, it's just, it's all about shoulder tapping and knowing where to go to for support. And we're at 23 Intermediate Street, Pacifico Wadarapa Trust. Come in, the door is always open. And I guess one of the sayings for us is you never leave um, the trust empty handed. So there's always, you know, um, there's always support. So don't be shy. Um, I will be around. People know who I am in the sense to kind of guide you where um, the office is. So, um, Pacifica community, please don't be shy. Come and visit us. We'd always love to see your smiling faces. Mm -hmm. Kia lava. Yeah. Kia ora. Thank you, Dilaros, for coming in also. Uh, I know that it was nerve-wracking for you, but this is the first of many. Mm. First of many. And so, and for us, oh, one more shout-out, and that's to, uh, she's not your rehab, uh, Matt Brown. Oh, yes. So last Monday, it was at the Copthorne. Great. For those who... Um, didn't see it, you can go on YouTube, tap in uh, Matt Brown, she is not your rehab, and you will be amazed. And for those men who need help in terms of mental health or addictions, have a look at that as well. Uh, there are other um, apps that he has available that he has created, him and his wife Sarah, uh, to help uh, men overcome difficult challenges in their life. Uh, in the meantime, Susie, one more last word from you? Mm, I don't know, last word? Um no pain no gain <laughs> for the for the gym junkies um and the steady as you go people um actually no we don't say that for um for us um yeah so yeah, until next month i'm sure spring is coming so i'm so excited by that it's actually been a little bit lighter in the mornings and yeah. the birds are singing so yeah something to look forward to summer days spring blossoms yeah great <laughs> uh, our next um, guest for next week is Davina Kuru from Fayora talking about their Komatua um, program. But until then, keep safe, keep well, and be safe in whatever you do. Kakite. Matiwa. Matiwa. Matiwa.